Hey folks, Captain Matt and Jude here tonight. What do we feed our worms? There's some basic food that the majority of worm chow is made of. And then there's elaborate mixtures. I brought it down to just a few items that I think are important in the mix, but also covering all bases, covering the vitamins and minerals that uh, the worms are gonna need. But we have chicken crumbles here. We have a gallon and a half of chicken crumbles, and I have a gallon and a half of corn mesh. Three scoops, one per gallon, of agricultural lime. Very important that you get agricultural lime because there's a, a poisonous lime you can get and you don't wanna use that. And then we went to the local quarry and picked up some quarry dust. And so we have some of that. It's a little wet, so it's not dusty right now, but it's very, 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 very fine. So that's what we're gonna to add to what we're gonna call our dry mix. And the dry mix is only half of what I do. Well, let me just talk about what's in here. In the, the layer crumbled itself, we're covering a lot of bases. We have vitamin A, vitamin D, vitamin E, probiotics and uh, prebiotics. So it really covers a whole bunch of uh, areas. When I first started using crumbles a few years ago, um, I didn't even know worms could eat it. I just had chickens and I thought, boy, this is what they're feeding hen laying eggs. She's got to have the vitamins and everything she needs to make sure that that egg uh, is loaded with what it needs to grow a baby chicken. And so I tried it on the worms and the worms loved it and the, and the worms prospered. And all these items you can get at any farm store. No added antibiotics or hormones. So, so there's no, you know, there's not a lot of junk in here. We got the cleanest stuff that we can get. You can get it totally organic. So we're going to mix this together. Jude's going to take one crumble and I'm going to take one of these and pour them in. Mash on top of it. We're making three gallons. I'll put the corn mash in. Jude is going to put the crumbles in, chicken layer crumbles, and I'm putting the corn mash in again. Right now, we have three gallons in here. I'll, I'll put this in a five gallon can with a lid on it. Jude, if you want to spread that around, or right across the top, the agricultural line. All right, and then we're gonna spread the, the uh, rock stone dust. All right, and now we're gonna mix it up. And we're just gonna put our hands in here and mix this. I offered Jude gloves and he said he's fine without gloves. All right, so there's, there's Captain Matt's mix. And again, we did it trying to keep it simple. You could do that as simply as using just crumbles if you wanted, or just using mash if you wanted to and then put a little rock dust in because they need a little grit in there to help digestion. And uh, the lime is to help uh, keep the balance of the pH. And we're going to go feed the worms. So I'm gonna take two of these and right about two thirds full, we have a lot of worms and they're gonna eat this up. We've been doing this for a long while. This here, plus what we're gonna mix it with, and I'm gonna show you that in a minute, the number of worms we have in our bin are, they are consuming this every two days. Now, if you only have a few worms, the best thing to do is just start off by spreading a little bit on top and find out, did the worms eat it that day? If they did, now you can spread a little more. And I wouldn't put any more in your bin than the worms will eat in a two day period. What we have here, it's September the 11th today? Yeah. September 11th. So. We have a lot of flowers and plants that are slowly starting to slow down. But what we have here in, in this mix today, we have, these are all the flower heads of sunflowers. So today they're gonna get a whole bunch of sunflowers with it. And I made these two days ago. I make this the day that I, that I feed it. In other words, we're gonna feed this to the worms but I'm gonna go ahead and make another batch so that it sits for two days. And that allows the microorganisms in here to start to really break down the food. So as we give it to the worms, they're already receiving veggies that are broken down. We also cut them up so much and so small. I mean, if you can imagine, these were the heads these were the heads of sunflowers, big sunflowers. And uh, we broke them up so small so that the worms can eat them. And we're gonna mix 
uh, this food here that we the dry mix and mix it in with the vegetables. And then we're gonna top it off with just a little sweet. You know, it, I don't know how it is, but uh, some people say that worms have sweet, te uh, sweet tooth, but they don't have any teeth. How can they have a sweet tooth? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna put a little sweet in there because worms really love sweet. I'll put mine in. Jude, you can put yours right on top if you'd like. And so we're gonna just mix this up. And, and folks, by the way, we're using sunflowers today. With our next mix, I'm gonna be using uh, lettuce. They've got two old um, in the garden. You can use any vegetable. Now, be careful with some flower plants because some of them, I cut coleus the other day and I went, I Googled coleus to see if it was poisonous. And one of the things it said, it even mentioned worms and coleus, stay away from it because it's not, it's poisonous and it would kill them. So, but any vegetable out of the vegetable garden you can put in here. Anything outside of that which you and I would eat, I would just Google it and make sure that you're not dealing with a poisonous item. But you may use any green whatsoever that you have. So Jude, give, let's get a, about a third of that. And then I'm just, I'm not gonna ask Jude to stick his hands in here. One set of yucky hands is enough. But we're gonna mix it up pretty, pretty well. And so now we have that dry mixed and we have fresh vegetables that have broken down for two days. We've really got a good mix here now. I'm gonna put a little bit and let me just show you. I'm gonna say that's a little short of a tablespoon. When I mix this like this, I like it. I like it to be almost uh, where I can, where it will just almost pour, okay? Uh, it's just so much easier to spread it. You could also, if you don't want to use vegetables or you don't have vegetables available, worm chow is generally dry. And so you may put, just take the mix that with the dry mix that we made and lightly spread that across the top of your worm bin. Again, not putting too much in. Find out how many, how much your worms will eat. It's better for them to eat all that you sprinkled on in one day then have so much left over after three days. But you can put it in dry, and I've some days I haven't had this ready. Um, in the winter time, I'm going to be using wheatgrass once again, uh, and I'll be grinding the wheatgrass this year, mixing it just like this. But uh, there are times when I don't have the time to mix it, and I'll put it over dry, it's fine. And just moisten it up a little bit with a, a watering can and uh, worms go, go crazy for it, they just love it. Let's, let's uh, take a look in this bin. They have eaten and they're hiding right now. So we're gonna feed them now. And remember, we have a lot of water in here and you'll wanna adjust for your own situation. I like it wet, but I have a continuous flow bin here. So if I put too much water in, it will work its way out and no one's gonna get harmed. What I do at this point, just put that down and I'm gonna just do a line of the food. Instead of spreading it over the entire bin, if you concentrate them together, uh, they'll do some breeding while they're eating. And I also found out that I could see exactly with a, a line, instead of spreading it everywhere, I could see exactly that we had a large, large number of worms eating this because the worms, when they started eating this, they were eating it from the bottom, they were coming in on the sides, and they were on top eating it. And it just gave me a feeling that um, everyone was really doing okay. And when I spread it out, I, I've never noticed that, uh, that type of feeding. So I, it just gives me more, um, you know, more of a, a picture of who's in there and, and how they're doing. Now, if you have a smaller bin, you can just simply put a pile in one spot if you want the same thing. Just put the pile on. Again, a small pile if you have a small bin, big pile if you have a big bin, uh, but uh, then you'll see all the worms coming into one area and there's a lot of socializing done at the same time. So now I'll put a second line over here. I, I find it amazing to even be able to say this but I'm gonna come back here, today is Sunday. Let me just scoot in there if I could, Jude. I'm gonna come back on Tuesday morning 
and do this again in this bin. We've got a lot of worms in here. I'm gonna come back and feed them again. And I find it really amazing that they actually consume all this, but they actually consume all of that. So that's what I do. And the next thing we'll do is cover it up. And um, if this, if I had not left the greens to break down a little bit, tomorrow morning, I, I would not see uh, the massive amount of worms on here that I'm going to see tomorrow morning. But because it's already broken down, they're ready. They smell it. They're, they're, um, they're, they're going to be on this first thing uh, by tomorrow morning when I check it out. They're, they're going to be on top of it, under it, and on the sides. So we're going to cover up at this point. And this cover is a little bit breathable. It's not a whole bunch breathable, but it is a little bit. It's ox plenty of oxygen. Whoop, one worm escaped here and a baby escaped. Let's get these guys and put them back, back to bed. Okay, so we are all fed up. I, I just want to show you how they react to it. And so we're going to remove the cover to the worms really fast. I want you to look right down before they move. We, we put two rows of food in, maybe three on this one because uh, I had a lot of food, and watch what happened with the worms. Now, they were, they were only fed uh, about 10 o'clock this morning, and they are already at it. And the reason they're at it is because we're letting the green, the nitrogen food, sit and break down for two days before we put it in. They have eaten a good third of what I put in already. So we're back at the where we started tonight. Uh, something that I should have said is that this is extremely economical. I buy the chicken crumbles for about $20 a bat, 50 pound bag, and the um, corn mesh or mash uh, was $15. So it's very, so what we've made here is very economical and you can seal that stuff every time you use it. I do believe with all my heart that what we have here is everything worms need to be sustained. Uh, don't forget before you uh, leave the channel, if you'll uh, wouldn't mind subscribing if you haven't subscribed. And remember, our newsletter is coming out. But make sure you subscribe to the newsletter. Uh, you will be the winner with the newsletter. No fee, no no price. We just want to help you and inform you. We'll see you next time. We're worm people.